Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Audrey and welcome to my 100 day project. Today is day 29. Wow. <laughs> and today I'm going to paint some marigold and I'll talk about marigolds in a little bit, but I'm also joined by Aslan, my cat. I don't know if he's going to move. He seems pretty settled in, so we'll see what happens. He usually starts you know, making his exit once I start talking. I think sometimes I talk too much and then he's like, all right, that's enough, you know? Um, but right now he's like really settled in. I think he's actually been feeling a little bit left out because we had some guests over the weekend, Memorial Day weekend and all. And, you know, because our dog is, you know, in the living room area mingling with the guests, you know, Aslan is kind of just, you know, off in the other part of the house just by himself. And so I feel like he's been feeling maybe a little neglected. So I don't, yeah, I don't know if he's going to move, honestly. I mean, I'm happy that he's here. Of course, I want to spend time with him, but I'm like, this is the wrong time, buddy. <laughs> this is not the ideal time. So if he doesn't move, then maybe we'll just keep chatting feel free to ask me any questions in the chat box um i yeah i don't i don't know what to do i would move him but those of you who know my cat he's a little um he, he doesn't like to be touched like too much you know he doesn't like to be picked up as much he's very testy so um yeah like he's okay being touched like that like petted but then if i were to like l try to lift him he will probably slash my hand so i don't want that <laughs> so anyway um yeah hi guys hello um hi oh my gosh indigo street studio wait i know you oh my goodness your name is blanking though please tell me your name um, Indigo Street Studio is a wonderful little place in Chicago. So if you're a Chicago local, please visit them. Um, I worked with them pre-pandemic days and they do creative workshops. So if you're in the area and want to host something um, like for your group, family, work, you know, birthdays, I'm sure they do everything and anything in between. Um, yeah. Okay. Hi, Keith. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for joining. So happy to see you guys all here. So again, Aslan is just kind of sitting here. So maybe I'll just keep talking and maybe he'll go away. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, so today I'm going to paint marigolds. So if you don't know what marigolds are, they are brightly colored, like orange, usually orange, yellow, and sometimes like deep red with some yellow borders uh, or like on the petals. And um, the funny thing is that they actually smell terrible. They smell really terrible, but they're great for gardens. So if you have fruits and vegetable gardens, especially right now in this season, make sure to plant some marigolds um, because the scent of them will keep away pests like rabbits, probably squirrels, possums. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I've always painted, mar painted, planted marigolds in my garden and I've never had, well, not never, never, but I don't need to put a fence around my garden, you know? So it's worked pretty well. Although this year I didn't plant them. So I'm like, uh, because marigolds, I usually save the seeds. So what's really cool is that when you deadhead flower, uh, marigold flowers, it actually, when you take out the petals, um, it actually, it's actually attached to the seeds. So you can replant them, save them, dry them, you know? Um, but then I don't remember where my dried seeds went. So Oh, oh, okay. Aslan's leaving. Oh, hi, buddy. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, Jeannie. Oh, no, no, no. Indi oh, no, no, no. Jeannie, I'm so sorry. I mixed you up with somebody in the Chicagoland area. Her name, oh, gosh. Her studio is called Indigo and Violet. Oh, my gosh. No, Jeannie, I'm very sorry. Yes, I did work with Jeannie, though, from Indigo Street Studio um, to write a blog post. Um, so please make sure to check out her website. Um, she's a watercolor artist as well. So anyway, I'm really sorry, Jeannie. <laughs> I totally mixed you up with somebody else. Um, okay. Hello, hello. Yes, Linda, you're right. Bugs hate miracles as well. Okay. All right. So why don't I get started since Aslan did make his way out. <laughs> and today I'm gonna try gouache, you guys. 
I actually pre um, like prepped my colors so I'm I really want to try to make this work I found like a new kind of not style but like composition that I want to try and you tell me you know how you like it um, and if I should keep doing stuff like that I, I most likely will regardless of what you say but I you know just affirmation would be nice <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, if it's your first time here, what I do during these sessions is, you know, we chat for a little bit, um, catch up with, you know, how we're doing, and then also just check in with your emotions. You know, how are you feeling as you're about to create or paint today? I'm sorry for the noise, Aslan's down there. <laughs> um, you might be feeling, you know, still maybe tired from the weekend festivities, or maybe you're excited to paint. Maybe you're confused or feeling lost. You know, whatever you're feeling, as we do this breathing exercise in a little bit, you know, try to try to center yourself and allow yourself to be focused on what we're about to do and not focus on the results. Because I think sometimes even when we come in with maybe some negative emotions, we dwell on on, um, we dwell on what we're about to do and then already uh, already uh, predict that we're going to mess up and we're like self-sabotaging, you know? So try to, um, as we do the art breathing exercise, try to, try to put away those thoughts and really be mindful of what we're doing here, okay? So as we breathe, we're going to breathe in through our noses for four seconds and out through our mouths for six seconds. You can close your eyes, open your eyes, however you feel comfortable. And then I like to place my hands, palms facing up, either on the table or on my lap. And I just kind of sit up straight and then just naturally slouch my shoulders. So here we go. Let me bring us back together. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. So hello, hello. Thanks again so much for joining. Um, yeah, let's get into it. And if you're here and you don't paint, that's okay. If you're just here just to watch or maybe you're doing a different kind of creative pursuit, that's cool too. You know, the whole point is just to be, be proud of yourself for showing up and um and just doing your best you know that's really all we can do you know when we start to put unrealistic expectations on ourselves that's really when we start to get in trouble right so yeah all right oh yeah washington state oh my gosh i wish I, like that's one state that i haven't been to i've been to almost all 50 states but if and when I ever visit. Yes, I would love to visit as well. Okay, yeah, let's get started. Um, let's see, I don't have a new playlist. I'm just gonna play what I've been playing before. So enjoy. <laughs>
want to check in real quick and talk about gouache. So I'm so happy that I decided to paint with the Holbein gouache and I don't think I'll ever go back. <laughs> um, yeah, if you were with me a couple uh, sessions ago, let's see, which one was it? This one, this one with the cosmos flower. Um, it was a horrendous, terrible mistake to use this other brand that I have. I will not name it, um, but I decided to redo it with the Holbein gouache, which is this brand, the Holbein. And it, I, I was able to somewhat salvage it, so I'm glad that I decided to use just the Holbein for today. It looks amazing. I'm so happy with it. I will just go through a couple thoughts that I have. Okay, so number one, I had a hard time trying to figure out how much paint I need. And because I prepped it before this live stream, um, the paint had dried out just a little bit. And so I had to add a little bit of water. And then that was problematic too, because I was like, if I add too much water, then the paint isn't opaque enough. And then yeah, but then I can't add more paint because I don't want to waste paint. And now I have a bunch of paint in this palette, like this giant glob of yellow that I'm not going to use, or even this yellow orange. So I'm like, now what do I do with this? So I have some ideas on how to use leftover paint, but I need to use this up before, you know, it becomes unusable. So that's my only thing about gouache. Like I love with watercolors, I don't have to worry about wasting paint. You know, like I can reuse it over and over and over again until they all become one giant you know brown muddy mess <laughs> but with this I'm like oh it's so not wasteful but I'm like what do I do with this you know so I'm pretty sure I can paint more marigolds with this color palette like I don't think that's a problem uh, they just won't go in the sketchbook but yeah so that's another thought that I had coming you know regarding gouache another thought that I had was um, I can't tell and, and this is this will probably just come with experience, but I couldn't tell the consistency of gouache. Like, like when I do watercolors and I you know swish my brush around in the paint, I can tell exactly what the consistency is. And again, maybe that's just years of experience. But with gouache, unless it's like a literal goop, like I, it's really difficult for me to tell how how thick it is or how watery it is. And again, it's probably just experience, but. Yeah, that's another thought that I have. Um, uh, Jeannie, no, it is not acrylic gouache. It's just regular gouache. So I can reactivate it with water. Um, yeah, so it's just a little bit different. So obviously it's a similar medium like watercolor in that you can reactivate it, but it is a lot more. I feel like I need more planning when it comes to gouache like I need to plan exactly which colors I'm going to use because I don't have a palette or like a pre-made palette right I have to squeeze out colors from my tubes so I feel like it has to be a little bit more planned out um yeah unless I'm using just leftover paint right yeah um Linda absolutely I could paint tulips you're right yeah right I could I could paint almost any yellow orange and red flower that I want it's just that now I don't have enough green so now I have to reactivate it you know what I mean <laughs> so anyway I just wanted to circle back to Keith's question I think you were asking that in response to how I said that I've been to almost 50 states so I mean I've been to almost 50 states in the course of my lifetime. You know, it's not like I've been to 50 states like in the past year. So um, just in my lifetime, like my dad was a bit of a travel bug. And so he would take us on like these long road trips um, with me and my brother well, and, and my mom, our whole family. And we would just, you know, cram into a van. And back then, you know, they didn't have laws. I mean, I'm sure they did, but no one cared about like kids not wearing seatbelts. <laughs> so my dad would take out the middle seats in the minivan, right? And then put like a tiny little TV so that my brother and I could watch TV. This was like when I was in elementary school. So we did a trip out west. We also did a trip out east um, so that we could visit, um, yeah, like Boston, Philadelphia, 
DC and then when we went out west it was like to see the Yellowstone um, Grand Canyon Rocky Mountains Nevada Utah like all of that so yeah so when I say that I've been to all 50 states or almost all 50 I'm saying that I've either like visited one city in it you know or it was like a long time ago so nothing super recent but yeah I haven't been to like the corners so I haven't been to Alaska Hawaii um, I, have, I have been to Maine though so I've been to that corner, but I haven't been to Florida, uh, Washington state, and then uh, like New Mexico. I'm pretty sure I drove through New Mexico, but I didn't really visit it. So yeah, so those kinds of states. I have been to Texas, but not Louisiana. Yeah, so I've probably been to like maybe 40 states. I, I would say like confidently maybe 40 states, but yeah. So all right. Um, <laughs> Jeannie, you're funny. Yes, I do need a giant palette just for gouache. So I do have a stay wet palette and that's exactly what it's meant to do. It's meant to keep your paints wet. And I've, I, I haven't read through the instructions um, like thoroughly enough to like use it well. So I will <laughs> now that I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with gouache. So anyway here's our little painting yeah i actually saw a similar painting to this on etsy um and like i, I was I, I love the dark background that she used and then because the miracles are just so bright they stand out against this dark background so i was like oh my gosh so i basically um like painted something like hers and but i just did mine in a square format since my paper is square so yeah i have her to thank and of course i didn't save who the Etsy shop was, but um, I'm, I'm sure you can find something similar to that. So yeah, I think, okay, so maybe this warrants a discussion on like, you know, copying other artists or whatnot. So I don't have like a full philosophy written on whether, you know, whether I agree with copying artists or whatnot. So I feel like, um, this is all just my opinions, right? So I feel like if you are, um, like just like how in the past, right, students would copy their masters in order to learn their style, right? So that was a very common, common thing, right? But then where the trouble is, is when they start taking credit for that work and saying that that's theirs and, and like their own style and then saying and then trying to make a profit off of it. Right. So I feel like that's where it gets a little hairy. So I think even in the present day, I think it's totally OK to try to imitate someone's style, you know, be inspired by what you're looking at and try to, you know, like, you know, um, copy the composition or the color palette or, you know, whatever. I think that's totally OK. However, if I then went to try to sell this, I, I, I would not, just as a fellow artist, I would not try to sell this. I would then try to take this and then make it my own, right? Maybe I would change the background color. Maybe I would make my marigolds, I don't know, bigger or smaller or whatever. You know, like I need to make this my own in order to call it my own design. Does that make sense? You know, so like I don't, I don't see anything wrong with being inspired by that Etsy artist and then, you know, you know, doing it in my sketchbook, as long as I'm not making any profit off of it. Hopefully that made sense. So that's just my philosophy. Um, I know others may disagree or have other thoughts, so I'm happy to, you know, have a discussion about it. Um, yeah, so yeah. Um, same thing with like photographs, unless it's royalty free, you know, like I think it's okay to you know, be inspired by it and use it. But then um, if you are going to make commercial profit off of it, then just be careful, you know, like make sure you credit the person that you uh, were inspired by um, and even ask their permission if you can, if they're still in business or around. Um, yeah, same thing goes with like classes, you know, when you when you create a project from someone's online class or even like in-person class like I think it's totally okay to like post about it and like share about it but then when you try to sell it then it's like wait a minute like I know you created that but that wasn't your like design you know it wasn't your like I mean 
at this point, like nothing's really original anymore, right? I'm just saying that like you're you're trying to take credit for something that you actually learned through somebody else, you know? So now take what you've learned and then make it your own. Okay, I feel like I'm rambling now, so I'm gonna stop. Okay. Um, Linda, I have been to 26 states, drove up and down the East Coast, and drove West Coast to East Coast. Wow. That must have taken that must have taken a really long time. Like I know a few friends who have done cross-country trips. Um, or moves and that's that's hard that's hard wow wow okay so I forgot to do one thing uh, which was say some affirmations about our work so let's take a moment so we do this at the end of our creative session where we kind of look at what we've done what you've created and say some affirmations to yourself like there are some things in here that I'm not a huge fan of and I don't like this little brown spot that happened here (laughs) you know but not dwelling not dwelling on the negative and trying to see the positive. Okay, so let's do that real quick. Okay, just take a moment and take it in, say some affirmations. Here we go. And I'm also going to wash out my brush and then inhale as I do that and then exhale as I blot. So here we go. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me. It's a new week. I hope it's off to a good start. And if not, tomorrow is a new day. I hope you can find some, um, you know, some good positive moments, um, whatever's left of today and then starting tomorrow. Uh, Let me just give you a quick preview about like what's happening um, on June 1st. So if you if you're not on my email list, make sure to get on my email list because every month, I I just email you once a month, okay? The first of every month. And then I send you digital wallpapers. So they're free, Um, you just, it just takes you to a Dropbox, I think, and then you just download them and then you can use them on your phone, tablet, and then desktops. Um, And then on June 1st, June is Adopt a Cat Month. (laughs) So don't need to tell you how important cats are to me, but I have this tutorial coming out and we're going to paint some blobby cats. You see that? They're so cute. All right. So this tutorial will go live on June 1st to celebrate Adopt a Cat Month. So if you like cats or know someone who likes cats, paint some blobby cats with me. (laughs) All right. So again, get on my email list. Um, You can find that on my website. You can go to free downloads and then get on that list. So thank you so much. I will be live to uh, not tomorrow on Thursday and Friday. Let me just double check. Let's see. Yes. Thursday and Friday this week. Okay. Same time, 8 p.m. Central. Thanks so much for joining. If you're still with me here. Yeah. Just thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys whether you've been here since day one or you just joined for the first time today. Thank you for being here. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.